Good day, everybody. My name is Adele Kroch, and with me, Brita Day, and we are from Food Focus. Along with Professor Lucia Annelich from Annelich Consulting, we are hosting the third Food Safety Summit from the 7th to the 8th of June, and this forms part of World Food Safety Day. It gives us great pleasure to introduce to you our platinum sponsor, Bill Marler from Marler Clark, based in USA. Should you like to know more about Marla Clark, please go to our website, www.foodsafetysummit.co.za. Thanks for that nice introduction. It's good to see you guys again. It's so nice speaking to you, Bill. Thank you so much. Bill, we know that you're very passionate about food safety and you've been sponsoring and supporting us since our first summit in 2020. And you've made it possible for so many students to attend the event. Why is it that you are so passionate about the younger generation within this industry when it comes to food safety? Well, yeah, as a as a guy who's kind of at the end of potentially the end of his career, I just turned 65 a couple of days ago. You know, it's really going to be. Um, you know, the young people, you know, both in the United States and around the world that, you know, are going to sort of continue the work that, you know, that I've been working on and others have been working on, you know, over the last 30, 40 years. Um, and so I think in order for us to make progress, we really have to invest, you know, in the in younger people to sort of carry on, you know, the traditions and frankly, improve on what we've done. Definitely. Thank you for that. <clears throat> so, Bill, there's so many ongoing outbreaks happening right now. We've we've got E. coli in pizza in Europe. There's the chocolate and the whole salmonella issue. We've had E. coli in packaged salads in the U.S. Why do we continue to see so many outbreaks? We have these comprehensive food safety management systems in place. We have companies who know what they should be doing. Why are we still seeing these outbreaks? Well, I think it's one of the things, you know, that you guys are so focused on, and it's the the idea of a food safety culture. You know, the we can set up rules, we can set up laws, you can set up criminal laws, you can set up civil laws, you can set up all kinds of regulations, but it really is <clears throat> management and the workers in those plants that are, you know, the people who really need to be paying attention to the details about how to produce safe food. And, you know, I've been doing this long enough where I can tell you unequivocally that outbreaks just don't happen. They they happen for a reason. And usually what happens is that people aren't paying attention to details. And, you know, if you look at the pizza outbreak, uh, well, you know, a year earlier, there was a, a whistleblower came forward with some pretty horrific photographs of what was transpiring in the Nestle plant. Uh, the fact that Nestle had an E. coli outbreak in the United States in 2009 that was linked to uh, cookie dough, uh, so the flour was contaminated. It's not paying attention to those sort of details and learning from history. And I think that's the one thing that we need to impart <clears throat> both on companies presently, but you know, in the future is the ability to pay attention to the things that could really impact a company negatively. And that is a poisoning event, whether it's in pizza, chocolate, mm -hmm. infant formula, or poloni. Yeah. So, so Bill, let's bring it closer to home, learning from experience. South Africa experienced a massive listeria outbreak um, 2018, we're nearly four years ago now. Um, how do you think that should have changed our food safety systems? Do you think it's changed our food safety systems? I think that's yeah. a, yeah, I think that's a great question, uh, Bridget. It's, you know, I was, I was in South Africa speaking at a conference uh, yeah. just, day, just days after the outbreak was announced. And I couldn't help but feel like I was living my life all over again from the Jack in the Box E. coli it, outbreak. It, you know, there we had 700 people sick and four children died, uh, you know, about 70 with acute kidney failure. 
and it really rocked, you know, the United States food safety system, uh, especially in, you know, hamburger, which is a quintessential, you know, American thing. Uh, when you think America, you think of a hamburger. And, you know, when kids are dying from eating hamburgers or have being kidney on kidney failure, you know, the government uh, uh, reacted, uh, the industry reacted, all of it a little slower than you would hope. But, you know, the one thing that happened was everything was relatively transparent. You know, the the hearings that were held, you know, in, uh, by U.S. Congress were open hearings that were delved into the how did this outbreak happen? The civil litigation that I was involved in representing the children who were sick and or died was completely open. Um, all of that information became part of what ultimately led to structural changes, both at in the regulatory field, in the industry's you know response to it. And I always tell people, you know, from in the early '90s till about 2000, about 90% of my law firm's revenue was E. coli cases linked to hamburger. And today, that's zero. And, and so you look at that for what it is. It's, you know, the only person unhappy with that is my accountant. And it's been a success for everyone. Um, and so, you know, to, I give that background by a way of, you know, I'm not in South Africa every day, but I'm obviously involved in the, as a consultant in the litigation. Yeah. Um, I have to admit, I'm I'm disappointed by the lack of transparency. Um, I'm disappointed by uh, the reaction uh, of Tiger Brands. Um, you know, Jack in the Box stood up and said, you know, it's our fault, we did it, and here's what we're gonna do to not only correct ourselves, but to share everything we can with the industry. They were very open. And that mm -hmm. had a positive impact on them and the and the industry. Government yeah. held hearings. The hearings were open to the public about how did this outbreak occur and what we could do to prevent the next one. And laws changed. Mm -hmm. So the civil litigation was completely open. Um, and you know, it wasn't without conflict, but ultimately the victims were taken care of. Four years into the this Poloni Listeria outbreak, I, I don't see from my perspective the progress that should have been made given the, the enormity of the tragedy. Yeah. A mm -hmm. thousand people sick, 200 dead, the world's largest Listeria outbreak, victims still remain uncompensated. And to me, you know, I, I don't see that sea change in, you know, what has happened on the ground in South Africa. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important also, um, Bill, to, you know, we, we're hearing it from your side. And um, the reason why we wanted to speak about it is to understand. And I think from, from our side, we would definitely would have to approach, you know, the people on the other side of the table to determine what's going on. But I agree with you, if you look on what's happening, meaning what's in the media and what you are seeing, I understand what you are saying is that it's not giving the, the, the view that it is taking um, the urgency as, as you would, as you said, we would like to see it to happen in. I think, yeah, I mean, I think one, one good thing that we have seen is, is an increase in recalls, voluntary mm -hmm. recalls which we historically have not seen um, very many of at all. And right. I think for me, it's, it's I, I don't think it's nearly enough, but I think it is a good step in the right direction towards companies taking ownership of potential outbreak causes and saying, hang on, let's do something about this. Um, yeah. Because I do think, like you say, transparency is so key to moving the whole system forward, the whole industry forward, and the consumers as well, because I think the consumers have now been brought into um, into play in the food safety in the food system in a way that never they never were before. 
but there has to be that level of transparency. Yeah, and you know, and and clearly the work that you know you guys are doing, and you know, inspectors. I mean, you know, the NICD in South Africa is is one of the best, you know, uh, epidemiological health entities in the world. The work that they did on the listeriosis case was, you know, as good, if not better than what's done in the United States or in the EU. Um, and, and I think there's a lot that people can build on, but my experience, my experience so far in South Africa is there's a lot of things that go unsaid, um, sort of out of politeness. Um, and I think we need to move past that and realize just how important food safety is, not just to the consumer, but but look, think about all the workers at the Polokwane plant that don't have jobs anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and you see that over and over and over again. It's not just the victims that are mm -hmm. victimized, it's the shareholders, it's yeah. the employees. Um, you know, right now in the US and worldwide, we're having um, an infant formula recall. Yeah. And what's happening now is people in the US and presumably around the world are have moms and dads who are dependent on infant formula can't find it. It's not yeah. on the shelf. And so yeah. they're completely, you know, freaked out about what they're going to do to feed their child. And to me, that just underscores just how important food safety is and how fragile uh, it can be. And the impacts can just be sort of it's like throwing a rock in a still pond. You know, you see that ripple effect go on and on and on. And what I think food safety needs to do is never let that rock get into the pond. And, yeah. and I think that's the most important thing. And I'm just, you know, have such admiration for the work that you guys are doing and, you know, putting on these conferences because, you know, that's where, you know, change is gonna happen. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. Um, I quickly just want to ask you one more question. You touched sure. on it where you said the food safety culture um, you know, you feel there is, do you feel, have you seen within the US where companies are open about the change specifically in food safety culture, that there was changes within those companies? Or what's your thoughts about driving food safety culture more? So I, there are companies that, you know, have been, especially when they've had problems, have been open about what they're what they found and the changes that need to be made, and they share those, you know, with you know the industry. Most companies want to keep food safety to themselves, primarily because it it's not something people want to talk about. Because if you're talking about food safety, it means that you're you you feel like your product could be unsafe, and I I sort of fundamentally disagree with that. I think being open about what you're doing about food safety, driving not only a, a relationship with regulators, with your supply chain, with your employees, and most importantly with you know your customers. So your customers know what they have responsibility for. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all of that I think is tied to just being open and honest about you know what you're doing and how you're doing it but that's th that really starts from the ceo of the company and the board of directors they have to understand that you know all of the companies that produce food are producing food sometimes companies forget that they're producing food and they think of it more like a commodity more like a you know a widget you know, uh, uh, you know, something that you would, you know, a, a screw, a light bulb, yeah. and they don't, they don't really understand anymore how important it is that what they're producing is something that goes into 
a person's body, into a child's body, into somebody who's immune compromised, and that those people rely on you to make sure that that food is safe. And that's the kind of, you know, feeling that people need to have when it comes to food safety culture. And again, that's why the work that you guys are doing is so vital to giving companies places to learn things and to make food cult safety culture, you know, part of everything they do. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, Bill, we could talk to you all afternoon, um, uh, afternoon for us. But, hey, um, um, I just got back, I just got back from Los Angeles. Uh, we're filming the last bit of uh, the documentary uh, Netflix is doing uh, on Poisoned. Um, wow. They, yeah, it's it's a three part, maybe four part documentary on not only the Jack in the Box case, but yeah. all the work that I've done over the last 30 years. Um, sure. So they, they, they've been filming uh, for almost a year now and following me around. It's been pretty interesting. So it's supposed to come out in before the end of the year. So I'll keep you guys posted. Please do. That would be fabulous. We will definitely share that. I think it's, yeah. uh, you know, you, you speak about learning from history. I think that is definitely, you know, we can look back at Jack in the Box and at the road that you've traveled and I think definitely learn from that process, you know, as we go forward. So, yeah, I mean, I, I tell companies, you know, <laughs> they can learn the easy way by going <laughs> to conferences like with you and 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 investing in food safety culture and their employees and investing yeah. to, to make sure that they do everything they can to avoid a food safety problem or they can wait have it go sideways and then they have to face me they have to face closure of plants they have to face potentially criminal investigations by the government and you know yeah. you look at the recent outbreaks in france you know the prosecuting attorney is you know looking into prosecuting the company um you know there's civil cases that i'm also involved in there um and you know the plant's been closed for several months so it it, it impacts everybody but wouldn't it have been better to go to your conference and learn about food safety first <laughs> So, ladies and gents, you heard it from Bill Marler. If you're not registered, get on over Register. to SafetySummit.coza. Exactly. exactly. It's been so good to chat with you. Thank you for your time and sharing. Yeah, and um, we look forward to doing this again.